I interesting. And, and thank you very much, Bobby, for that quick uh, introduction to um, uh, branding. Back to you, Munene, based on what uh, Bobby has explained, we have two words here that sometimes sound like they are conflicting, or do they mean the same? Help us understand image and brand. All right, just based building on what Bobby has said. W what are these two things, and especially when it comes to, when it relates to an entrepreneur? Um, thank you. I'd say thank you, Bobby, as well, for, the, for those amazing insights. Uh, to talk on image, basically, like uh, Bobby has said, it's it's a perception of, of um, how your brand looks and uh, how your brand uh, pro portrays each and every aspect, uh, every element of uh, of its of its business. And uh, for for a brand, um, my addition would be a brand is also an experience. What experience do people get from your brand? That is, that is, that can be a very big aspect of branding. Uh, for example, if uh, if I walk into a shop and uh, they 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 ask me to sit down, and then they have chocolates before I get served, and then after. You know, there's a very nice way of being served. That is branding itself. So branding as well can be those experiences your customers uh, go through while interacting with your brand. You're talking about experiences, and uh, uh, even as we get, you know, we, we're getting quite a good number coming. And someone is asking about recording. Can you record these? Uh, of course, we have our YouTube channel where you can follow through, but um, I will allow you if you can. It's okay to record uh, because, I mean, it's a free discussion. So feel free, uh, <laughs> definitely not uh, you know, trying to take care of copyright. So you're talking about experience. You're talking about experience, experience which comes with branding. And uh, there's, there's, there's a simple question I would throw to uh, Bobby. What is the relationship between a business name and a brand because when people walk into a company if today i was walking into allow me to use examples to safaricom i would know i'm in a safaricom shop by the name right. on the at the right. door but then is that branding what is the relationship between a name and branding and then tie that with this question bobby i we, we think of names based on the availability from the registrar we told to give three names to you know to do a name search. Should right. we be thinking about the availability or the brand at that point? So kindly give us that insight, Bobby. Yeah, very good question. Actually, a brand name is uh, mostly, unfortunately, in the African continent, mostly it boils down to just having a name for the sake of identity because it's a legal requirement. Uh, that's why people have to give three names. That's a business name. Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's more of a legal requirement than a brand. A brand is what I want people to see about me and understand about me. The image that I want about the company to rest in the mind of the consumer or the client. So uh, here in Africa, I, I have to narrow it down. The perimeter is very small in terms of the name. The name is simply, I need to get this thing legal somehow, get a license, that sort of thing, unfortunately. But the name can also... For people who are more sensitive uh, uh, to, to create, uh, like here, I'm going to say about branding and imaging, uh, the people who are more sensitive will be careful even with the name. And it's not just about getting a name, but that the name itself is a brand uh, sometimes, because that, that has to, like I said, Nike is one of them, Coca-Cola is one of them, the name is the brand. And so in some cases, the person is the brand. So you have to, uh, you, you have to make sure you get that name or get a name at least closest to what communicates your brand. And so uh, the name, unfortunately, in, in the African continent is just boiled down to getting it legalized somehow. A brand is just a whole new different thing. A brand is where you may be a little bit more specific on what specifically you're offering and the quality of what you're offering. And that has to be reflected through uh, the designs that will come out. In this case, like the logo, it's a brand. Uh, for, for instance, you and I walk into a shop, uh, what are the chances 
uh, we are going to uh, pick up uh, a name that we don't know over a name that we do know. See, the, the one that uh, we can consider a brand has made its presence in the market and in the households. For example, Nike, Puma, Coca-Cola, name it. And uh, they spend millions of dollars just to make sure that they have the image that they want you to see, they make sure you see it that way. For instance, and this can go to a great extremes, by the way. For instance, uh, did you know that the, the Pepsi uh, logo, the guy who designed the Pepsi logo, charged $1 million for the logo, just the Pepsi logo. Uh, don't take my word for it. You feel free to check this out. Uh, $1 million mm -hmm. US dollars for one logo, which simply has a blue, a red, and a white strip running through it. So uh, you, you get the feeling here that they want something that was minimalist in its, in its uh, image, but yet that spoke what they're feeling. And their feeling is, you know, this must settle in the minds and the hearts of the people to whom we will sell the product. And he has done that to a great deal. By the way, it is one of the stiffest competitors of Coca-Cola. You think Coca-Cola is popular mm -hmm. until you start doing some research on Pepsi. Now that's a brand. You understand? It's not just about, hey, we need to get this thing legal. Otherwise, we'll be out of business or get arrested. No, it's about going further than that and becoming part of the, the experience of the consumer, not just the people creating the brand. So I'd say that's, that's a key difference. So uh, unfortunately, we need to change this mindset in Africa that it's, it's just about registering a name. No, it's not, it's not about that. Uh, and I'll go into that a little bit more. Uh, perhaps I'll use uh, my own logo as an example uh, later on. But uh, yeah, in my mind, that's, that's, uh, that's what I perceive uh, as the difference between the brand and the name. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. And uh, that's quite well elaborated. Someone is asking, and, and uh, like I said, we are both on Facebook Live and, uh, and Zoom. At Zoom, uh, in Zoom, we are already 60. So uh, you can also join. If you have friends that are coming in, they can also uh, join on Facebook Live. Here we have a limit of uh, 100, but uh, we are not doing badly. Now, I want to, uh, you know, come back to Munene. And uh, Munene, there's a question that is coming in here. Uh, and I just want to check on this before I go to my co-host, uh, co who is monitoring the questions that are coming on Facebook Live. Uh, the question is, and this is to Bobby. Okay, actually, this is to Bobby. Uh, what do Carla say about your brand, and how does one go about selecting brand colors for your logo and materials? Now, I, I will add something on uh, onto that question. You talked about one million dollars of you know just for developing a logo. Right. This was care us, man, because we are startups. I mean, <laughs> the, even the little money I had, I invested yeah. in the whole business that I wanted to start. So mm -hmm. I would want you to answer these and then have in mind, I'm coming to Monene to tell us about the cost of developing that brand. But Bobby, tell us, colors, how do you go about coming up with colors for your logo? If, if, if it's really important like that. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because first of all, <clears throat> colors, colors communicate a variety of things. There's a wide array of uh, feelings, emotions that can be perceived by just looking at a color. For instance, green can be fruitfulness, which I have a pretty big liking for. And not just any green, you want to tone down your green. It, it should not look like uh, an organics company or anything like that. It's not like we're selling aloe vera, but if you were, you'd probably go for green. You know, nobody's selling aloe vera and going red on their branding. Uh, point being, uh, it, it can communicate certain things and it can be very subtle. For instance, uh, a milder green would, would communicate fruitfulness but it would also communicate fruitfulness through composure. You know, people who don't like sweat it out to go green, you know what I mean? They're fruitful, but they're not working too hard at it. They're subtle, they're more, the approach is more skillful, it's more refined. Uh, so uh, tones of green can mean lots of things. A darker green can mean a little bit more aggression in, in the fruitfulness. And now we know we'll do anything to get there, you know? We, we want to be fruitful, we can get there by violence or we can get there by tact. And uh, so you, you find that certain companies are very tactful in their approach. They can use colors in a way that communicates how they work. We can be successful without making a lot of noise. So that's a milder form of green. If you go dark green, like I said, it could mean aggression. And uh, that's tact in color. So, and tact is the art of making a point without making an enemy. 
So you, you can actually communicate something. Bobby. Yes. Bobby, are you telling us that colors have meaning? Because oh, if I'm doing a if I'm doing a logo, I thought I just want to, I just need to, you know, get a color that I like. Maybe it was my wedding color or this is what I, when I look at red, I love red. Yeah. Are you telling me there's a business name that will not go with some colors? Please Absolutely. just elaborate that before we move on. Absolutely. Like I said, I just gave you an example. If you're selling aloe vera, I, there's no way I'm giving you a red logo because what would that communicate? What are you, are you donating blood or are you selling aloe vera? So they, you have to differentiate the color. But yes, colors can communicate things differently. And for example, purple is considered a color of, of you know, it's, it's royal, it's regal. Uh, churches use a lot of purple, by the way, if you've noticed. And you'll no, you notice this by two things. One, by the billboards and things you see out there, the logos. And two, by the, for us people like us who do branding, you find that we, we can deduce that statistically by just looking at what kinds of clients are streaming in. Most of the churches I've done designs for, they're all going purple. A lot of purple and a lot of red. Uh, they want to make their presence felt. And they, they say, hey, this is a royal family, so we, we will go purple. And uh, yet blue is a royal color. Red is a royal color. You know, which blue do you use again? Is it sky blue or is it deep blue? Or is it dark blue? Is it navy blue? That can give different tones. So yes, colors do matter. So you want to think through what you really want. It's not just about, this is my favorite color. And that's why when the client comes in, we sit them to advise them. Okay, first, the first question is, what's the nature of your business? Secondly, where are you doing it, right? And then based on that information, we advise that you, you should use these colors and these colors. And here's the thing. We actually give them like three to four logos to choose from. So that in all of them, we weaved into the colors and tried to communicate what the business might be able to de deliver at that location. And then, and by the way, eight, uh, in, my, in my experience, seven out of 10 times, the client has been able to change their mind based on the color delivery in the logo, which is fascinating, which tells me uh, they do come to understand at some point that yes, this color communicates properly what I'm doing. I didn't know this, but I know this now. So yeah, I think that's very, so yes, colors do communicate different things. They have meanings, absolutely. Red is Valentine. Ever seen a blue? Fantastic. Blue Thank you. Valentine. You probably just find a red one. I mean, I don't, I don't expect you to go green or blue or black on Valentine's, but you see mm -hmm. a lot of red for good reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much, Bobby. I, I'll be coming to Monene. Before I go to Monene, I want, I can see my co-host as something. Johnny, come through, please. Uh, is there something that we need to talk, talk about right now? Yes, there are some questions that are coming in, flying over here. I'm seeing a gentleman mm. uh, asking, what are the key areas to build uh, your personal branding? Because now we are talked about colors, but what are the other key areas? What are the other segments of personal branding? Uh, and while you're at that, there's also, um, Rag was asking about uh, patenting a logo. How does one patent a logo in Kenya and what is the process? So maybe we can uh, touch on those two. Fantastic. Monene, give us this answer. Uh, what are the other key areas of branding? Uh, thank you. Uh, th there are so many uh, elements of, uh, of branding. Like for us, we like to divide them into digital branding, experiential branding, promotional branding. And uh, digital branding basically is all your mobile and digital marketing efforts, websites, Google advertising, uh, SEO, display banners, social media uh, channels. Monene, then we have, Monene, yes. let me, let, hello Monene, hello Monene. Yes. I, I just want you to uh, slow down a bit I can see people very busy taking notes. That is a very, very, uh, you know, fundamental point that you're driving through. So kindly uh, just come, uh, come up again on that, uh, you know, on that point. Digital branding, then break it down like you're doing because people are really in keenly not taking notes on that. Please, I, I wanted you to slow down on that and, and, and take it through again. Okay. Um, so branding has uh, a few elements. 
which uh, you know go into into it. Uh, I'll start with uh, digital branding. This is uh, your 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 mobile and digital marketing efforts. You can uh, decide to do uh, a website. You can do Google My Business, and uh, these are Google Google tools, uh, which are free. Like for example, Google My Business is free, uh, which allows you to post videos and photos like a social media channel. You can uh, also, it has a review provision as well, uh, which is very resourceful. Uh, it gives you uh, analytics, which again is very resourceful for a small business. We have things like Google Ads. We have uh, search engine optimization. Uh, we have social media channels. And we usually tell our clients that they have to be in at least four social media channels because each channel plays a unique role and it uh, it gathers uh, a unique kind of uh, target market. So for example, uh, Facebook, they, they, there's a target, they, there's a certain audience you'll find more in Facebook. Twitter, there's, a, there's an audience you'll find using Twitter more. There's an audience you'll find using Instagram more, uh, YouTube more. So we advise brands to be in all these uh, channels so that they can consolidate all these uh, audiences. Uh, then we have uh, experiential branding. This basically is uh, experiences. Uh, brands are coming out uh, of uh, pushing the brand to people and rather pulling people into the brand by using experiences. For example, if you, if you have a saloon, you can decide to pay for a tent uh, somewhere at Kencom and uh, offer free services maybe between 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. you can offer a few lessons on uh, beauty, uh, taking care of yourself, and that will go a very long way into uh, customers, uh, both potential and uh, uh, both prospective and current customers into experiencing your brand. And there's nothing that can replace experiences when it comes to, to branding. Uh, promotional branding, this is, uh, this is what most Kenyans have confused branding to be. And this is printing, uh, things like business cards, flyers, uh, signages, uh, carrier bags, you name it. And uh, in this, the, the trend in this is that uh, choice is king. Uh, gone are the days when uh, as a brand you sit in a board and uh, decide that in December we are giving people um, calendars. What if your audience doesn't use calendars? So choice is king in promotional branding. Uh, for example, Safaricom gave me a, a Bluetooth speaker and I was very happy. I'm, I'm still happy until today. Uh, if, if your audience is uh, uh, fully, maybe mostly women, uh, giving them things like branded lessons, uh, ca branded carrier bags can go a very long way. So in promotional branding, Choice is very king. Yes. All right, Monene. Thank you so much. I hope people are taking notes and that's, you know, that's like a lesson. Uh, Bobby, I'm throwing this to you and there's something Monene has said before we go to what Johnny had, uh, had mentioned as the second question. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have market segments and different companies target different, uh, you know, uh, segments of, of clientele. For example, there's a company that is targeting young people. There's a company that is targeting, uh, you know, married people. Another business is targeting aged people, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, some mm -hmm. are targeting people who are semi-official or, you know, not too serious. Others are targeting people that are in, in the office, official. And all. Does branding relate to the market segment? And what should we learn from that, please, Bobby? 
Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I, like now, you've just said uh, some, some companies will be targeting a certain product towards, say, the youth. And uh, the, the, of course, the, the natural thing to do there would be to see what do the youth do? You, there's, there's a study that goes along with that. For instance, if I'm, I'm reaching out to young people, then uh, when, when it comes to branding, and uh, Munene just touched on that, the two very important ones, experiential branding and promotional branding. Now, exper experiential branding is a process by which brands create uh, a, a drive based on sensory perceptions of the brand emotionally, which will influence their preferences to actively shape their perceptions of that brand. That's experiential. Like now he's like, you put up a tent. If I'm selling coffee, I'll bring the samples of my coffee and, and give them for free. If there's a sensory perception to that, when you taste the coffee, you say, ah, so this is good coffee. It's definitely better than the one I had yesterday or the one I had elsewhere. And that uh, tells your, you know, your, you have a sensory perception you know, by way of taste that, hey, there's a better coffee in the market than the one I drank last night or the one that I've been drinking for the last 18 years. And so that, that's experiential branding. And when you see that and you see it's not just what you tasted, it's what you saw. And when you, what you saw and what you taste come together, it becomes an experience. That's what we call experiential branding. Promotional branding is slightly different. This is where it's a way in which I inform and communicate my, my, my image, my brand or my product so that it drives you or persuades you towards purchasing that particular product, if you follow what I'm saying. So that, that's, that's different from an experience. That's simply a promo. I push it in a way that uh, push it, 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 it encourages you, entices you to purchase that specific brand as opposed to another one. And, and there is stuff like, uh, and the pro promotional branding, there is what we call the, the merchandising, the caps, t-shirts, umbrellas, even flash disks, you know, that sort of thing. That's promotional branding to use existing products and just put your names on them. So it's like riding on an existing stream of products to, to promote the brand. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, do we have something from the, from the uh, plenary? Uh, let me get to know this. There are some questions coming through. Hi, Johnny, can, I, can you hear me? All right. Um, let, me, let me pick a quick one here. Hear oh, yeah. Good, good. Yes. Come through, please. Anything that we need? Uh, did we answer yes, the second uh, question? Is, is, uh, yes, there's a second question from Tyrus. He was asking about a logo, patenting a logo and the process of doing that in, uh, in uh, Kenya. And there's also another question. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to ask this one also, uh, pertaining to what mm -hmm. we are talking about. Uh, Dr. Waswa is talking about, uh, we've just talked about uh, colors. And she's asking, uh, what about a name? Uh, is there a meaning that does uh, the name of of uh, of the business have have a part to play in it or you, do you just pick a name so maybe you could you could handle those two questions one from tyrus and the other one from dr waswa uh, bobby would you want to go yeah uh, which one uh, whichever i think i'll uh, let me <clears throat> let me answer the one on the what, what's that on the patenting first of all uh, in in kenya we don't do that a whole lot just just uh, by the way uh, the term mostly in Kenya is trademarking, by the way, uh, which means uh, whatever uh, logo or design or distinguished uh, mark or some sort of distinguished signature to your business, it could be a logo, it could just be the name, but in written a written specific way, and you have to trademark that. And, and the, I think what you have to tackle there is simply what means is that whatever I've come up with needs to be unique and that nobody else can use the same. And if they do, then there is some sort of legal protection. Uh, to that effect. So the thing here is, uh, so that's what a trademark is. It's a unique signature to a firm, an entity, a person. It could be an individual, it could be a, a company, a corporate. And so, by the way, if you're, if you're, so you, if you're an individual, a partner or, or a corporation, you can actually uh, get it trademarked in Kenya. Uh, the requirements for that, that's, I think, a whole topic by itself. But yeah, you, you need to go through some legal requirements. You need to fill some forms. Um, I need to fill up some forms, uh, namely, uh, I think it's TM2 or TM3, something like that. TM2, TM32, you have to fill those forms up. Uh, there is an examination stage at which the registrar will look at the, at the logo. Of course, check if there's nobody else who has a similar thing. 
and uh, after that you will have to uh, foreign applications uh, applicants have a different uh, procedure to follow on that one so yeah there are things like that and but you can get it registered uh, you get the trademarking of that will uh, <clears throat> will vary pricing will also vary but uh, yeah you will be prepared to part with some good money on that one so that's about patenting it's it's really just called trademarking in kenya yeah Thank you. Uh, and, and the aspect of, uh, can I throw this to um, Monene? Uh, Monene, tell us about um, a name. Uh, this, this is African saying that every name, any name can bring up a child. Now, is this applicable to business or should we be serious about names and uh, what, what, do, what do names mean uh, you know, when it comes to branding? Um, thank you. Um, names are important. But like we, my, my personal opinion would be uh, mostly it's not about the name of the brand. Uh, it's about what you do with that name. Um, your, your, the, the experiences now define the, uh, the name. But now to, now to go back to the importance of, um, of a name, uh, one, it has to be catchy. Uh, it has to be relatable to the industry that you're in and uh, right now uh, you can uh, you can actually do do a smart way of uh, checking for keywords around the business you want to start and google uh, gives you keywords for free uh, you can and maybe from the the top keywords you can try to coin a name around your business in relation to uh, the, the keywords you found on Google. I think that would be my uh, opinion on that. Okay, but Bobby, is it possible yeah. then, because now we are talking at what we are talking to entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. some of us, we already have the names, all right? We began these names, we came up with these names in our own crazy way. Uh, maybe you combined your your firstborn's name and your secondborn's name and came up with a name for a business. Uh, how do, then do we, you know, correct that when we are already uh, going? Uh, is it possible? Uh, yeah, well, you could change the name in the eventuality of time. Uh, there's a cross legal process to that too. And by the way, just before I get even there, I, uh, if you do want to get your name logo, uh, you know, trademarked in Kenya, by the way, you could go to uh, info. You can drop a mail at info. Uh, I believe it's at Capita, uh, Capita, Re Care, Regist Capita Registrars something, .co .ke, I believe. Uh, they they mm -hmm. walk you through that. There is, there is a lengthy process to that, by the way. You'll have to be very patient because also the Kenya Industrial Property Institute uh, will journal this for like 60 days. So the German, just to make sure there's no other logo that looks like that or feels like or communicates that sort of thing you would get into some sort of legal fender bender with the authority. So yeah, it, it's, it's a bit of a process. You'll have to be very, very patient. Likely it'll take three to four, maybe five, sometimes even six months to get a proper trademark uh, with a unique signature to it. Just, just I thought I, I should mention that, by the way, it's important. So yeah, okay. uh, sorry, what, what was that question again? I, I didn't come to that. Um, the question was about um changing the brand or changing the, the company name while, while you're already running a business yeah uh, you could do that uh, if it's just a business name you can always change the name but if you actually registered mm -hmm. it as as uh, say a sole proprietor or a limited company then changing the name is at all order mm -hmm. it simply means you're changing the entire thing into another thing while the operations of the company or the institution may remain the same uh, you know legally it's it's like starting a new entity uh, so you have, you have to be uh, careful about that. So you might want, that's why we always say, think it through, you know, don't rush into, you know, uh, uh, into a business with a name, especially, which you might think you may have to change in the future. Uh, usually it's something you really think through. It's like making one of those big decisions in life. You know, it's like once yeah. you have a name, you don't go changing your name every day. Same it is with a company. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um, uh, before I get to hear what Johnny has from the from the plenary, let me throw this. How long does it take to build a brand? Back to you, Bobby. Then I'll come to uh, to to Munene. How long does it take? A uh, brand, uh, if it's uh, if we, I believe from personal experience, if it's uh, something you want to uh, to endure in the minds of the people, then that can take mm -hmm. years. 
You know, if it's just something in passing, then people are creating brands every day. Not I, I, I hardly consider those brands, but it, it can take a while. So again, like I said, it's a process. It's not an event. So you might want to take okay. time, think it through, have meetings, meet with people, uh, people like us, people like Munene, sit with them, sit with guys like you and then say, hey, this is the direction I want to take. Hey, drink lots of coffee and just discuss it, man. Don't rush into it. So it can take, it depends on what you're trying to do. It can take a day, it can take two minutes, or it can take a year. In my case, you know, I had, by the way, speaking of changing names, uh, the company that I started was called Neat Stuff. Neat Stuff, as it turned out, when I went through the legal process, there was another company called Neat Stuff. And uh, boy, was I furious because I, I never thought somebody would have thought of the name, but hey, you know, stranger things have happened. So I, I sat down and said, dude, you need to get another name. And so I thought, okay. And it took nearly, I'd say, almost seven years to, to come up with something new and totally unique, really thought it through. I wasn't like sitting every day 24-7 for seven years thinking, but you know, in between those occasionally the cup of coffee with friends, experts, just to know what, what would be the good name for this and, and things like that. And so we finally arrived at Stroke 7 Design and Solutions. And it's very thoughtful, uh, maybe talk about it some other day when we have more time, but yeah, so that's about changing names. Uh, interesting. Thank you very much, Bobby. Uh, no. Tony, do we have something before I, I throw something to Munene? Hi, Johnny. We have questions yes, from uh, the plenary? Yes, we have a question and we have a comment. Uh, there's a gentleman who's telling us that for the, for the, for the registration of the, of the logo, for the patenting of the same, you can go to KP, or I think it's a Kenya Industrial, uh, uh, Kenya Intellectual Properties something. Yeah, uh, but there is an institute. Property institute. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah, you, you can you can go there for the patenting. But also right. there is a question that has come in about mm. how can I value my brand? How can I value my brand? Interesting, yeah. Monene. Would you want to respond to that? Um, how can you value? Can can I can I add on uh, the the previous question first? Yes, please. sure, please. Go ahead. Uh, how long it takes to, to build a brand? I'd say, uh, like Bobby said, it's a, it's a process. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my addition would be, I will divide it into two things, uh, perception and experience. Uh, there's, you, can, you can actually say, by the end of 2020, this is the perception I want my brand to to give uh, online. You can say we will do quality graphics, we will do quality animation, we will do we will channel out the best content, and that will help you um, will help your brand to be positioned as a very professional brand quicker. Uh, the other one is uh, experiences. They say. Branding is like raising up a child. The, the experiences you cannot uh, offer when your brand is a toddler. And the experiences you can only offer when your brand is a teenager, quote unquote. Yes, so for me, I'd say uh, it's a process, but you have to divide it between perceptions and experiences over time. Thank you very much. Um, okay, Johnny, are we good on that side? I want to throw a question uh, right now to the... Uh... There's another question oh, okay, that is coming. You. Yes, uh, ahead, there's a ahead. question that is coming. Uh, they're asking, supposing, uh, supposing you have a running business and uh, the business is mm -hmm. well-branded and this may be in a specific region, then you grow the business to a wider market mm -hmm. and uh, region due to demand. Do you have to change the brand name and how will this affect the business? Wow. Good. Did you get the question? Did you get that? Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Suppose you have a running business. Uh, it's, it's branded for a specific area or location, I guess. That's what the question is. And uh, the business grows to the extent that due to the demand, you have to change the, uh, the name. Uh, will, they, will this affect mm -hmm. the business? Well, I imagine that if you've been running the business for a while, because if it's really recognized in that region, I imagine that you as the person running the business 
have done already through the process of time your own feasibility study by experience uh, that, 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 that if you change the name, then the product will work. So I imagine that's a very, very, uh, it's very specific to the entity that we're talking about. Uh, you know, if, if, say if it's, uh, we can't say Coke because Coke is everywhere. Say if I come up with a beverage and it's called Kilonzo, you know, if I establish that brand in a specific region of this country, and I've grown to the extent that I could, perhaps it was a pineapple uh, uh, juice drink, you know, if, if I, for some reason, start getting lots of mangoes in that region, then I might want to think of mango juice. So uh, changing the name, I don't know that. I'll leave to the entity. Your own experience should tell you by the feasibility of the, through the process of time. But the other thing you could do is put another product under the same brand. You know, like we have Afia juice. You could get different flavors if you follow what I'm saying. So I, I think the ideal thing to do is to have the umbrella name remain there because it's already established. Scraping it is not so profitable. Sometimes you can add a facet under the same umbrella name. That would be a more profitable way to go, depending on where you are. So that, that, that's a very specific, that question has very specific answers depending on what you're trying to sell or do, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, Bobby, um, on, on that same note, I, I just want to throw this because we have seen companies that um, have maintained their their umbrella board, you know name but mm -hmm. then come up with you know came up with very many other products and they branded those products right. and maybe let's take, take an example uh, of apple all right mm -hmm. apple had itunes ipod iphone uh, iphone you know 8x all these right. so it, uh, you're telling us it's okay to make, to keep that first name because people know mm -hmm. you by that first name and right. then if you come up with other products, you can now brand those other products. That's what you're saying? Absolutely. A good, a good example would be a local company we have here, which is really doing well right now, is Menengai Oil Refineries. Menengai Oil Refineries. Menengai. For, yeah, it's been there for some time. It changed hands somewhere in two, 2009, and we were called in to do the branding, by the way. And, and, and so you can see that, that even though it changed hands, uh, one of the good things that happened is that the new management that came in was really keen on doing promotional branding, promotional branding, and they used their, their own vehicles to do this branding, and they branded their trucks and stuff, and, but you'll notice under the name, Men, they did not scrape Menengai by the way, it's still Menengai, although it has changed hands, nobody knows, people just think they got really good at it. No, actually, hands. but what happened is that they, re they retained the name Menengai, but under that, they had so many other names come up for products like uh, cooking fat and stuff. They even have shoe polish right now, Menengai shoe polish and things like that. So to answer the question, yes. And that is a prime example right here in Nakuru. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. And that is called pivoting. Fine. Thank you. Uh, Johnny, do we have something from your end? Quickly. Uh, can I can see our time is uh, just right. Can I answer the yeah. question on uh, brand oh. value? Well, you want to see something. Go ahead, go ahead, the, please. The, the question on brand value. Yes, please. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I'd say there are a few elements that uh, can guide you and can really push your brand value uh, very highly. Uh, the first one is brand image. And uh, one of the best examples here, brand image, it's uh, Apple, iPhone. You know, there is a... Uh, there's an image that uh, an iPhone gives you or any uh, Apple product gives you. Uh, there's brand positioning. And this is uh, uh, for a, and a good example of brand positioning would be a product like Coke Zero. Uh, it, it has positioned itself to people who don't really like uh, sugary stuff. And uh, the other one is uh, brand personality. You know what is your brand about? Is it youthful? Uh, is it uh, energetic? For example, Fanta is very youthful. In in, in all their branding elements, they uh, display youthfulness. Uh, the other one would be brand experiences. You know what? Uh, for example, if you're a Wi-Fi brand, what experiences do your customers get? Does your internet uh, buffer all the time? Uh, do you give the best customer services when people call you? Um, then the other one would be uh, brand differentiation. 
and uh, a good example would be Arial. They added a fabric softener, which means that uh, uh, people don't have to buy a fabric softener uh, separate from Aerio. If you buy Aerio, you buy everything in terms of uh, your cleaning experience. Then the other one is brand extension. Uh, you have Safaricom, which has Fuliza, Masoko, uh, M-Pesa, and all these elements can not can they usually push your brand value very high yeah. uh, hello. okay could i ask yes, something Johnny. um go ahead the, the, the question mm -hmm. was uh, if i got it correctly was uh, how can i value my brand how how can i tell whether my brand is actually having an impact on the market because sometimes the product just pushes itself but how can i tell how the the value of this branding that i'm doing how how is the how is the perception of this branding if i could uh, if i if i understood it correctly how, what is the market perceiving my my brand to be what is the value of my brand how can you value that uh, thank yeah. you and and yes in terms of money and let me just add on what john is saying because i i may want to bring in a partner to put in some money and uh, i've built this business for the last two three years uh, I've pushed the brand all up. How, uh, th that is exactly what Johnny, uh, maybe the person who asked that question is asking, how can I quantify the, the uh, you know, in terms of money, what my brand is, uh, you know, is valued at? Maybe Bobby, would you want to go and just to build on what uh, Manina said? Well, I, I think one of the most obvious ones is it'll tell you uh, once you see the, the real as essential reason for putting a product out there is to make profit, is to make money. That's why it's called business. Otherwise, if you, by the way, if you're not making money, you're running a charity or a church or something. You, you need to uh, define, there's a line between there. You know, this is, this is business, which means you have to get profit. So one way to know, of course, is okay. you know by your profits, that which simply means how much is it selling? Do people like it? Secondly, you'll know by having proper modes of feedback. Uh, when you have a product go out there, you must put in place feedback modules. Uh, a system which tells you, you know, what is the response of the consumer. And these are systems you have to put in place. Uh, for instance, a Nivea, if you've noticed, is a product. If you go to a supermarket shelf, you'll always find a lady dressed in blue standing next to the, to the shelf, you know, and they have some fancy branding done over there. And if you walk into that place to buy, say, a deodorant, uh, I don't know if this happens to me, but it happens to me all the time. I mean, you, I walk into that aisle or that shelf, and because of how well branded it is, I find myself gravitating to the most expensive one. And usually it's just Nivea over there, you know, so I will buy that. But, but having somebody stand next to the shelf uh, to explain to you why this is, the, why this is better than the others can also help. That data is being collected by Nivea, by the way. You should know that. Nivea is collecting that data. They're having meetings behind before that lady came to the shelf. They're having that meeting and they're collecting data. And that's what I call feedback. They're getting feedback. So how, how many people passed through this aisle? And how many picked this one? How many picked that one? Why did they pick this one? Is, is, there, is there something in the, in the product that we've not added? And then based on that, so feedback is a very critical module, critical way of knowing whether uh, your product or your service has value. So one is by your... Of course, the sales, you will know. Uh, secondly, you know by feedback. And feedback will do another thing also over and above that. It will also tell you how to change and improve the product for more sales. That's why we have feedback. Like we're doing a session now, Pastor Kilonzo would like to get feedback on, so how many people were here? Who, who listened more? Who listened more to Bobby? Who listened more to Munene? Uh, obviously, people have different needs. And based on that, then he'll get he'll know how to tailor an even better session. Maybe we'll have a Filipino next time on this session. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and now that you've said that, please make sure you leave us with your number and your email address. Uh, we'll be able to get back to you and also update you on our programs. So thank you sure. very much for that, Bobby. And I know maybe you may also want to gain a, val a, you know, a, a brand valuer or someone who can value your company. Mm -hmm. Most of the times we value companies based on property. Uh, you know, net worth and all that and cash, uh, you know, balance sheet. But I think it's also good to understand 
uh, how your, your brand is doing, you know, time after time. Like Bobby is yeah. saying, get feedback, know what people are saying about you, and then you can always have a stronger bargaining power. Um, right. yep. Just before I get back to Johnny, because I can, I know he has uh, some other question maybe on face, from Facebook and, uh, and Zoom. Um, the question here is, how long, okay, I, I asked that, make, how can we make a successful brand from scratch? And must I have an investment in terms of money towards brand, Monenia? Or can I partner with a brand consultant who can help me build my brand? Because I cannot stop by, uh, but ask, this is COVID-19, post-COVID-19. People have cash flow issues, but we still want to maintain a brand. How can we go about it? You are a brand consultant. Bobby is a brand consultant. How can someone engage a brand consultant and then work with them uh, for them to have a successful brand? Monene. Um, I think uh, branding should be, I, I say, I usually tell people the first thing I branded before I branded my business was my heart. Um, because you you have to be very passionate about about branding because it's, um, it's one of the oxygens of, of, of any business. And uh, for... For business, uh, for small business, um, right now you need knowledge that you can apply. Uh, if you're if you're searching for knowledge anywhere, look for knowledge that you will apply. Uh, first things, social media channels are free, very free. Google My Business is very free. Uh, so many of the Google tools are free. So what you need actually is to take time, commit to uh, building your brand. Uh, there are so many elements of, uh, for example, digital branding. You have things like uh, uh, going live, uh, which increases your, when you go live on social media, uh, it, it notifies your, your users, your, your followers that you're live. Uh, this is a very big strategy for staying top of mind. Um, another strategy is uh, email banners, for example. Uh, you can attach email banners on each and every uh, email you use. And uh, this basically is uh, uh, it's like giving someone a, a small billboard every time you're sending out an email. You have things like uh, reviews. Uh, Facebook has uh, that, that provision. Google My Business has that provision. Uh, you have things like uh, branded episodes. Uh, which you can do with a very nice uh, phone, which has a good camera. So those are the uh, some of the things a as, as small business can uh, undertake to uh, build their brand, especially in these times uh, when uh, things are very hard. You can curate content from other sites. You can do your own content. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Johnny, we have five minutes to go. Johnny, do we have very burning questions that we need to pick from the, uh, the, the comments uh, before I engage this gentleman oh, yes. on... Uh, okay, please bring them. Uh, bring them. Uh, we can uh, tackle them right now. We have, a, we have a question from a gentleman is asking, why is it that most banks don't maintain the brand name, mostly when they are changing the business, when the business is changing hands, you know, like in the in the Barclays APSA, uh, does this affect the customer perception? That is a question. Does uh, does the change of, of name affect the the customer perception? And then uh, maybe as we uh, let's answer that, then we can get to the other one. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Bobby kindly answer that, and that's a very important question. I totally agree. Absolutely, absolutely. And the reason is because <clears throat> if, if one entity has been running a specific bank institution, financial institutions, or a loans in, institute, then um, I think that when, when, when it doesn't do so well, or it mismanages the money, or you know, it just doesn't do as well as it thought, then what happens usually is goes into receivership and it changes hands. Now, that's party A. When party B comes in, uh, uh, I think the reason obviously is, even though it's not stated clearly, uh, it, it's, the reason is you cannot uh, build new successes on past failures. 
And because that's settled in their minds, for example, back in the 90s, if you remember, if you recall, if you, if you were even born that time, uh, really some of us are that old. And in the mid 90s, <laughs> there was Trust Bank. And if you recall, Trust Bank was a very, very established name in this country. Trust Bank was everywhere. And um, I recall I was, <clears throat> I, I was just fresh out of high school and I was given the job of branch manager in one of the automobile companies here simply because I was very aggressive. And at that time, trust, most of our clients were with Trust Bank, but Trust Bank went down and lots of people lost their money, millions by the millions. And mind you, if you had a million, just a million in 1996, that was a lot of money. You know, money had value them days. And so what happened is Trust Bank uh, went down, went into receivership, they changed the name. And the reason is because the guys who came in to salvage the bank, uh, did not want the same mistrust with the clients. And on top of that, they needed new clients. So for the obvious reason that we cannot build on a failure, we have to then change the name. And that happens a lot in business and for good reason. So that's the reason, by the way, it's, it's really that simple. The rest is all colorful uh, embroidery, you know, on the outside. But the truth is uh, we, we cannot have, if it went down and it went down the wrong way, then building on the, on the same foundation and building trust may take longer, which is not profitable for business. Yeah, very good true. question. Very true, it's a very good question. And yes, I, I also know that just building on what Bobby has said, sometimes there's a, a change of strategy, change of uh, target market, uh, and that, that leads to changing the name. Um, and yeah, if you look at uh, SB, is it, is it S SBM or the old Chase Bank, Mm -hmm. That is exactly what Bobby is saying. You can't build, you can't renew Chase Bank and it, is a, it's a, it was a failure. So thank you very much, Bobby, for that. Uh, quickly, Johnny, I, I know you have uh, two more questions. I'll give you two minutes to finalize on the questions so we can close the show. Yes, sir. Uh, Go ahead. Is it right? So the question is, uh, is it right in experiential branding to do branding targeting your competition. The gentleman says, I've seen this war between Airtel and Safaricom. And how does that impact on your business? Going after your, 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 compet your competition, yeah. Monene, the bananas <laughs> and, the, and the watermelons. How do we speak this? <laughs> uh, I, I don't, uh, my opinion would be, I don't think it's, it's right. Because uh, when, you, when you focus on your, you know, I think that the days that uh, brands used to focus on their competitors, you know, they are slowly being phased out. And, uh, you know, customers need to laser focus on their clients. You know, how do you give them the best experiences? You know, for example, uh, Safaricom have never replied to those ads because Safaricom are busy thinking of how do they stop con men from our SMSs. And you can see right now they have a, a solution for that. Uh, Airtel, on the other hand, probably they have an agency thinking about their next ad targeted towards Safaricom and uh, probably not think not thinking about their their clients. So for me, I'd say uh, uh, focus more on uh, on your on your clients. But if you want to have fun and uh, you've focused on your clients, you can um, decide to maybe take a hit or two on your on your competitors. Okay, thank you, Marina. I think yeah, we what Marina said is true. We have to think about ethics. You know, every business must be run with uh, you know. Uh, looking into ethics. If it's not ethical for you to hit directly on your clients, it's at the end of the day, it may not even change your business. It may not change your sales. Um, the other thing is uh, try and build a business that is be above competition. If you're targeting too much or you're looking too much into your, or on, uh, on what competitor, competitors are doing, maybe you should do only that only by benchmarking, when you're doing benchmarking, but not because you want to attack them or change their image, just build your brand. Be ethical in your business. Customers who want to relate with businesses that are ethically run. And I think that's quite important, right? That's right. By the any, way, any let, me, question that, let, me, let me just add on that. Uh, it's, very, yeah. 
what what Munena has said is very very true and very important that we should not mm. be sidetracked by competition because that yeah. uh, communicates even as a corporate entity as a business it communicates insecurity on your part true. as as an mm. entity uh, like for example we do we do websites by the way we are the only company that do websites and you cannot we don't do any website without a contract by the way n- you cannot come to me and have a website done without a contract you have to sign a full year okay. contract we are the only company doing that in fact if you cannot sign a contract we don't do your website now that may sound negative but the reason is we provide a whole year security for the client uh, that keeps you from being hacked online and things like that we keep adding security protocols things like that we are the only company doing it so if you do approach me for a website you be prepared for a one year contract with a maintenance fee for every month for 12 months now that's uh, some, most kenyans will say hey that's too costly that's fine but there, that's for your security Thank you very much. Johnny, do you have one? I have a very burning question that I want to throw to my uh, panelists here. Do you have one that we can tackle? Yes, we have one here. The man is asking, mm. uh, we have great sportsmen, but we rarely see them getting engaged in promotions, especially in athletics. So where, where do they get it wrong? Where are the sportsmen getting it wrong? Because they're very good at what they do, but how come they're not getting engaged? And then let me just throw in Or, this one. Let me just throw in this one. from uh, yeah, from a gentleman called Paul he says uh, does goodwill of a brand still exist do we still have uh, something called goodwill in in branding so tackle those two <laughs> and we are good to go <laughs> let me start with the last one with bobby and then uh, monene will answer the one for the sponsor does goodwill uh, still uh, bobby would you want to answer that quickly goodwill still exists it may not exist uh, necessarily a lot on legal paper but yeah i think in the in the in just in the in the nature of being what it is and that is goodwill it does exist if i if i created a brand and it it made so much presence in the hearts of people and the product made so much profit if i'm going to move on and give it to somebody else uh, then yeah it's a, it's a mutual agreement and yes i believe it's still there and it's very real it's it's dependent on the a mutual agreement of the two parties but yes goodwill is here to stay it's not going away anytime soon Thank you Munene a sportsman where do they get it wrong <laughs> uh I'd say there are, there are a few angles to to that the first one would be target audience um and this is where corporates feel that uh the sportsmen uh, as as famous as they are they may not be the best uh, influencer uh for their target the other thing is engagement uh influencer marketing is moving more to engagement and uh as we know these sportsmen are not as social as as uh brands would love them to be uh you you not find them talking about uh, uh features of a phone online they'd rather be somewhere in eldoret uh training So I think those are those are two aspects that uh, brands are looking for engagement and uh, are they really uh, will they really influence uh, our audience Thank you we ladies and gentlemen uh, I'll have to bring this to a close but uh, in the next 2 uh, 3 minutes next week Thursday we have a discussion on manufacturing and industrialization kindly don't miss our next Thursday discussion and then the other week we will be discussing about startups and we are hosting Mr. Washuri George Washuri uh, from Optiven and a few other guys to discuss with us on how you can start a good business or a strong be- you know start from uh, low or even from zero and build an empire so don't miss out on our next week's discussions now i want to throw this to bobby uh, and as you give your parting shots and monene when it comes to personal branding i want to have a, I, i may build a very strong company brand but i'm just trying to make sure that there's, uh, there's no but it was not unmuted because there's some noise now the the question is can i build a very strong business brand but i water it down by my own personal brand or branding all right the way i dress the way i keep my hair the way i you know all that so how do we relate personal branding and company branding bobby 
yeah the two <clears throat> the two are very different drastically different uh, but the the challenge i think you are asking in the challenge i see in your question uh, is mm-hmm. is, uh, is that sometimes the brand of the company the image of the company and the brand mm-hmm. of the person who is in charge of the company maybe the ceo or the yes. director are conflicting yeah. because the brand of the, mm-hmm. of the company is much higher in in its value in its delivery than the person mm-hmm. who is in charge and yes that's an issue that's why if uh, this really happens but if it do, when it does happen if the brand of an uh, a company is really good and has has the, the it's generating the profits that it should just by sh- being well branded then what happens in usually is is a rescue te- team comes in to brand to do the personal branding of the person who is uh, in, you know in the helm so that's very important as uh, if this by the way if this conflict goes on too much too long uh, then the 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 image the brand of the company can start suffering and can affect the sales also so yeah that's true so we must separate the two or fuse the two you know have have the guy come up to the the, the level of the, the the image of the company yes very important thank you very much bobby and thank you for having you tonight uh, monene would you want to say something before we end the show on that please uh, leave us with your contacts and you know number and uh, email address we'll get back to you we also appreciate you and let monene have or give his parting shots and then we call it a night uh I, is it a parting shot or uh, on personal uh you can touch on personal branding and then you know give your final remarks and then i'll come to baby to give your final remarks uh, i'd say i'd give an example of uh uh chachil um mm-hmm. we know him as uh chachil then on the other hand we know him as uh, kingangi on uh, on on classic classic 105 yes i, I think he's um, you know he's one of the one of the guys who has been uh, able to separate um his brand from his uh personal brand and uh you know like bobby said you have to you either you either match them very well or you separate them very well but they both need consistency and very distinctive uh brand assets like for example okay. um uh there's a co- the jalango and his suit uh there's will broda and uh how she dresses you know when you when you see her in an advert dressed in another way uh i don't think you will want to watch that ad but when you see her in what you you're used to uh you will want to sit down and uh you know enjoy <laughs> okay thank you very much parting uh, any parting shot do you want to uh, say anything add on anything before we close no that's it i think <clears throat> from my side i'd say uh, the most important letter in the alphabet is q quality there are three things cri- crucial for your business quality quality and quality so if you can get the quality okay. up there you can get the customers fantastic fantastic thank you very much uh johnny any parting shots from your end uh, I had a one one. uh the session has been very informative maybe uh next time we can touch on more about uh, public relations and the brand how how to match the two yeah okay. but but all in all the session has been wonderful the panelists have been amazing uh kudos to them that's actually what we the feedback that we're getting from the participants who've come in they are saying the panelists have really delivered and uh, we are saying a big kudos to them thank you very much thank you it was amazing and uh, uh monene do you have something to add before, because i've not taken uh <coughs> remarks from you uh for me i'd say um when uh, when when post covid uh one of the things you need to consider highly for branding is uh doing branded research and uh, google forms can do that for you and uh, survey monkey and um there's a way you can customize even the link with bitly for free uh to customize your research uh the other thing is uh community community markets uh that's a trend that's coming up very highly 
for example, if you have a group of engineers, if you have a group of uh, doctors, and uh, you have uh, a product that is targeted to them, uh, they can push your brand more. So if you can find a way, find their WhatsApp groups, find their Facebook group, find their Facebook groups, and uh, target them, they will easily spread your brand. Yes. And uh, the last thing is, uh, I'd say the five steps of uh, customer journey is awareness, consideration, decision, purchase, customer experience, repeat business, and referral. And branding, uh, the, cus the customer journey for any product is awareness, consideration, decision, purchase, customer experience, repeat business, referral. And branding is key to every stage. Thank you, Munene. I'll task you. I'll task you to type them at the on the chat room for everyone to take home. That's a very very nice uh, parting shot. Thank you very much uh, for having you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and the panelists, Bobby Munene. Thank you for your sacrifice. We do this every Thursday from nine thirty to eleven latest. Uh, we finished it good uh, in good time. Thank you, and I, was, I also want to say, let us invite people. Knowledge is key. Knowledge is important. Many companies, if they had knowledge, they would not be doing as badly as they are doing. And when this knowledge is available, let us let us tap into it. And I'm sure we'll be trying to do this every time and every 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 now and then. Thank you. God bless you. Have a blessed night. And for everyone, we couldn't get everyone talking. Uh, I've seen several people trying to request whether they can say something. We always encourage for uh, to do chat because we are on Facebook Live and we are also on Zoom. God bless you. Have a blessed night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kindly, Bobby and Monena, leave you. your contacts so we can get in touch with you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.